Francisco Jimenez is a serial entrepreneur and has been involved in the launching and selling of some very profitable enterprises. And now, Francisco is immersed in trying to scale his latest concept in a very difficult business space. I and, and my friends with this uh, with Price Grabber, we had a lot of experience in, in e-commerce. For about a period of six months, we were meeting daily and really exploring different business opportunities. We discovered that there was a huge gap between box color and the satisfaction and, and, and what happens when, when a woman goes to a salon to get the hair color professionally done. When you talk to Francisco, you can tell he is a very down-to-earth man. He conveys his thoughts with few words. Despite being very young, he has been around enough and he has been successful enough to know that emotional thinking is not the best advisor in business. Precision is. Testing your concept is. Establishing a solid operation is. Let's talk to Francisco, the founder of eSalon, and find out cómo lo hizo. Success. Success. Habitos. Habits. ¿Cómo lo hizo? How do they make it? Descubra las costumbres y secretos de los triunfadores. Discover the habits and the secrets of those who have succeeded. Francisco, thanks for being with us. Gracias por estar con nosotros aquí en Cómo lo hizo. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me to join your podcast. So, Francisco, you are the director, el director ejecutivo, co-founder, executive director, co-founder of eSalon, correct? Tell me, how did everything start? Okay, so then uh, let me start with, with just explaining what is it that uh, the company that it started does. So we do custom formulated hair color for women that color the hair at home. Uh, so the premise is basically that you can get the same results of uh, going to a salon colorist, but then you pay a fraction of that by doing your hair color at home, but with the same custom-made formulas. Wow. So <laughs> when I say that, like probably a lot of people may be thinking that I may be coming from, uh, that I may be a hairstylist, but no, I'm actually an engineer uh, with a business degree. So uh, if you had asked me 10 years ago that I was going to be in a podcast <laughs> speaking about a business in hair color, I probably wouldn't have thought that that would be the case at all. Uh, so I got here, I'm originally from Mexico City. I came to Los Angeles back in 1996 to go to business school at UCLA. Uh, so I got my degree. I, was, I thought at the time that I was going to be here for only two years. Uh, and Los Angeles is a great place to live. So then right. I, I met my wife when I was uh, going to business school. Uh, and then I decided to stay here and th think about what happened. This was 1996. I was uh, finished business school in 98. And that was when the first boom of the internet was happening. Mm -hmm. um, as a business student uh, and as an engineer, and I had always loved uh, computing It was really exciting to be in the midst of a uh, transformation uh, of pretty much the early days of the information technology uh, revolution. So I was back then working in banking, uh, but a good friend of mine had started an internet business uh, that was really growing quite fast. Uh, so I decided to leave my well-paid banking job to join uh, a startup. Uh, that was called pricegrabber.com. Uh, that was back in, in, in 1999. Uh, and then, so basically I made the switch from being in finance to going into technology. And it was a really rewarding experience making that switch. So that's very interesting. But you were an employee, correct? You had a good salary, I imagine, or fair salary. Yeah, well, I, I was doing very well uh, with, with a very stable job. You had benefits? I had full benefits, and then I decided that I wanted to pursue something more entrepreneurial. And you took the leap. You took the, the, the risk, and you jumped. You saltaste. And, and, and I made, salté. Hice el cambio de, de estar trabajando para algo muy estable, muy definido, a cambiar a un 
a un ambiente totalmente de más dinámico, con mucho más riesgo, pero también al mismo tiempo tuvo mucho mejor eh, upside. Now, were you afraid? Sí, uh, it was, it was, it's always a challenging moment when you're deciding to leave something that is well known, that you cannot know the path, but ultimately it was not making me happy. And then at the same time, it was really exciting to see this revolution happening uh, with all of these different business models being created. Uh, and then the, it, was, it was really back in the very first days of the internet uh, days. You have a, you had a family at the time? No, I was I was uh, single, so that was that made the transition easier. Right. So definitely, I understand that like the more commitments that you have, then right. the harder the making that decision uh, can become. Um, so I was lucky enough that it was a, at a time that my cost of switching was not tremendously high. So you jumped from a bank uh, job, you know, in finance, and you went into the internet or e-commerce. Of some kind, and I think that the company, the company that you you formed with your friend was uh, about comparing pr prices. That's correct. So the name of that business, uh, it was a price grabber, so pricegrabber dot com. So I was not a founder of that business. I was a very, I was in, involved with that business very early on. A good friend of mine is the one who started that business. So I joined when it was less than ten people. It was a quite a small company. So I was there for about six years wearing different, many different hats. So as an MBA grad, uh, I was doing a lot of strategic initiatives for the business. Um, as a foreigner, we also, I, I was in charge of also rolling out the same business services uh, internationally. So we opened uh, an office in the UK to start like branching out into Europe. We also came up back in the day with Preciomania. Preciomania was the Spanish version of Price Grabber. So, um, I mean, even back then, we saw a lot of upside in, in targeting the U.S. Hispanic market for an e-commerce business. And from there, you went to form eSalon? Yeah, so basically what happened is, and this is the, the unusual situation, basically we had, a, I and, and, and my friends with, this, uh, with Price Grabber, we had a lot of experience In, in e-commerce, uh, we were very lucky that we had uh, an exit. So we sold Price Grabber to somebody else. And after that happened, uh, a few people took time off. And then after that, we just got together again to brainstorm about which new business to start. So we already had the idea of like that we wanted to do a new business. So with the same group of people you made after probably a couple of weeks or whatever they took to, for resting and then you came up with this idea of this alone? Well, we basically were for about a period of six months we were meeting daily and really exploring different business opportunities and this came out of the blue I mean because none of us came from the beauty industry but then we discovered that there was a huge gap between box color and the satisfaction and, and, and what happens when, when a woman goes to the salon to get the hair color professionally done. And we started like realizing that even though like most people are not happy with the box color, it was actually a quite big industry. It's about a two billion dollar industry just in the US. But there were there was a lot of dissatisfaction with that product. Right. How did you get to that uh, space? Because, I mean, it came to you, you were walking in the street and suddenly you thought about it. It was an inspiration, a, a revelation. It was, we, we were really open about looking into different ideas and this came literally out of the blue. Uh, but we started doing research and trying to see, okay, why is it that people complain that the hair color never comes out looking the same as what the box? Right, the picture in the, the box. The picture doesn't, doesn't look the same. <laughs> Then people complain that it's just always too red or like that it's not too dark, too light. Uh, or people say that the, the box color fries their hair. So what right. does that mean? And why when you go to a colorist at a fancy salon, they can get much better results? Why is it that they were doing differently? So uh, we, we, I actually hire my wife's colorist and start learning from her. Is it what exactly is it that you're doing that is different? So we hired her as a consultant and we started learning that really what makes hair color different and better at the salon is mostly because the color is actually formulated 
depending on what you really need. So if you have a woman that has 50% 50 of gray versus no gray, the formula will be different. If you have somebody who has fine hair versus thick, resistant hair, the formula will be different. Uh, if you have somebody who already has dyed hair, like there were all of these different rules that a colorist, a trained colorist will actually follow to come up with a better formula for their clients. Um, in addition to using professional grade hair color. And we replicated a process that does exactly the same. So in the process, walk me through the process. So you got how many friends you were in the in the brainstorm? So I started this business with three other friends. So we're four co-founders. Four co-founders. Okay, so first you found out of the blue that probably that's the space that you want to jump into it. You one of the one of the spaces you were researching, and then you went to okay, this is the one. So what was next when you you know defined that this is the industry, the beauty industry, hair industry that I want to go into? So it was a lot of small steps to make sure that that was going to be the right decision and the right business. So the first thing was just asking our friends and family, what do you think about the concept of like custom hair color? And just as a concept, because it was like four guys that didn't know much about this industry. Right, right. Like, so we just were asking our closest people, what do you think about this? And you were openly about it. I mean, you yeah, were asking, because uh, that's so important. You know? Yeah, I think, I mean, a lot of people think that when they have an idea that they have to keep it close to the chest and don't tell anyone because otherwise somebody else could steal their idea. Right. And I think that uh, that's probably not the best approach to things i think talking to as many people as possible then you learn something from everyone who you talk to that ultimately makes you refine your idea and and i think it makes for like a, a better case for you to then once you're ready to decide to move on with that idea you, you're in a much better place because you have collected a lot of feedback so right our, our first set of feedback was our immediate network of people who I guess my mother-in-law because she used to color her hair all the time at home and then ask for like, what do you think about this concept? And they, we did an, a couple of online surveys asking, okay, what would you think about this? And the, and the response on the surveys, and because your friends and family can always right. tell you something that it may, they may tell you what you want to hear. Right. So then also... The worst advice, they say. <laughs> it could be bad advice, but at least you have to ask your closest people. But at the same time, you have to be aware that they, they may have, like, they may tell you, yeah, it's a great idea, just to not hurt your feelings. So we actually also put together an online survey just to see what the concept, like if, if there was an appealing concept and the response was overwhelmingly very positive. So after that, we said, okay, let's, let's, let's see, is this even possible where we're trying to do, have somebody buy color online? And is it that what we can come up with better, better than the alternative? So <laughs> we, we created a really simple uh, test where we came up with a very simple website where people will answer a few questions, submit a picture of themselves, and then we hire a colorist that will help us put together custom formulas for those people that we have never seen in person. Uh, so we put together like about 50 different dummy kits. I mean, actually test pilots, it's like a pilot uh, test. Uh, so we send out those 50 kits to people to do their own hair color uh, where they actually had the name of the bottle with, with the, that, we, that we printed and apply that into, we came up with the instructions that we printed and send that in a package. And then we asked for feedback. How was your color? And then the response was that was much better, significantly better color than what they were buying from the drugstore. So, so was a hundred percent positive, or you had also people that weren't happy? We got like really a good response. I'm sure there may have been one or two that there, there was also actually about ten years ago. So there may have been a couple of people that may have had. But what we did learn it was that even the people who were not perfectly happy they were close enough that they gave us a second chance to fine-tune their formula right so during the process you found that there is a need of a product that you might be able to cover to bring up innovate so you will disrupt the market because either before you went to the hair stylish the hair salon or you bought it the box uh, you know in any place so then you found that space. Exactly. So, and you make a test of your idea. So you took it out 